Games. This is Aussie Trader, and um, I just have a short video here for you in response to Tokyo's question um, that he asked earlier on a thread in the Mela thread, asking why I use average true range or ATR on my charting, saying do I like it or do I have I got a lot of uses for it, whatever the question was. So this is just a short video to to address uh, Tokyo's question. Um, I use an ATR for a lot of purposes in my trading. And I'll just focus on a couple in the purposes of this video because I want to make it quite short. Um, and I will deal with ATR when we open the traders library and one of the new additions we've got coming with three stocks on fire. Um, we're going to make a lot more of these videos and I'll do one specifically on average true range um, and all the multiple uses I, I have it with it um, in my particular approach to trading. But for the purposes of today, I'm just going to show you why I have it on my chart as a, as a default basically. And the prime reason uh, in, in, in this instance is that I use average true range to indicate to me the volatility of the shares that I'm looking at in question. Um, and in particular here, for the purposes of constructing a portfolio and adding new shares into a portfolio or recommending picks that we do here with three stocks on fire, recommending a share for a certain portfolio, um, it's important to have understanding that how volatile that share is so that it fits in the realms of the outcomes of the particular trading that we're looking at. So for instance, I'll show you. Just looking at our, a chart of Visa here, V. Um, I haven't done my updates for this weekend, but we'll get along to that as well. So here's V. It's about, what is it? It's closed at $81 or so. And the average true range down here, I just got sampled over 20 days, is $3.28, uh, okay? And basically what that tells me is that V can move up or down based on the previous 20 days trading, $3.28. Okay, that's interesting. But um, what I further do to en ensure that gives me uh, extra information is I do a percentage calculation for that. So I take the $3.28 that the average true range represents over the past 20 days. I divide that by the current into the current price, which is about 81 bucks. Okay. And I can see that the average true range expressed as a per percentage for V is 4%. So I know that Visa can move up or down based on the previous 20 days of trading around about 4%. Okay, And that's sort of realms in the area of 3, 4, 5, 6%. The sort of um, volatility of shares we're looking for uh, when you're looking for sort of decent swing trades with relatively low risk and things of that nature. And the, the rule of thumb is the higher the volatility the shares become, the more difficult they become to trade. So if we look at a few other shares that we're adding into the diversified portfolio, for instance, uh, let's take a look at one that Ramsberg um, put in recently, STLD, for instance. So let me call up STLD, the steel guys. And I think we just got an entry on that on a close above the previous high. <coughs> Here we go. So here's STLD. You can see just closing above the previously previous highs area here, not the highs, but a previous close high. And SDLD is what, a $39 stock? And here's the average true range based on the previous 20 days, $1.81, okay? So I take a $1.81 and divide it into the price, it's roughly 39 bucks, I'd say. Okay, so I can see the volatility there, four and a half, four point six percent 4.6%. Let's have a look at another example. Uh, let's take a look at um, SDA. So SDA we've added again a few days ago. And chart's not great. I'll just make a different sizing here. Okay, so SDA is about a $23 stock currently. I'll update that uh, in the next few hours as well. And the average true range based on 20 days is $1.06. So what does that tell me? $1.06 divided by 23. Okay, 4.6%, that's the average it can move, either up or down, around about 4.6% per day, percent per day, it would be considered its average movement. Okay, so they're good stocks in terms of their volatility and the outcomes we're looking at for the diversified portfolio, for our main sort of thrust in that area. Now, we will add in more volatile shares in there, but by knowing this sort of information, I can immediately see at a glance that I don't start adding in or recommending stocks too many stocks in a certain portfolio that are too volatile, um, which would go against the outcomes of the trading we're looking for. Let's take a look at the speculative portfolio where we've had, where we do have perhaps more uh, volatile shares in there. Let's take a look at SOL, which unfortunately didn't work out on the way I had intended. Um, 
which is just the way it goes, and we got taken out with one of our stops. So here's SOL, and you can see it's broken down. Um, we'll see what happens down in this area here. But we got stopped out, I think, at $18.95, I think, in this area here. Um, but it's what now is 17, let's say it's an $18 stock, and its average true range is $2.18. Okay, so let's just take a look at what that means. 2.18 being the average true range in terms of dollars, divided by price, so let's say it's 18 bucks. Okay, so you can see that's got a volatility of 12%, more than two times, two times more volatile than the other shares I was just showing you. Um, so it would not be, we didn't put it in the um, uh, diversified portfolio because it was too volatile, it was too risky um, in terms of the outcomes we were looking at. Um, if we take a look at another example, you know, the famous UTVG. Now this is a OTC stock, and by their very de definition, they will be more volatile. So we've got their uh, UTVG, we've got a $1.80 stock, and the average true range is around about nearly 20 cents. So I really don't need the calculator to show you that one, but 0.198 divided by current pricing, $1.80, let's say. Okay, so that's 11%. So you can see that's a very volatile stock relative to those other ones I was showing you. Now, <coughs> that's the key reason uh, I use it in terms of having it on the chart as, a, as an immediate indicator for me to, to know that level of information. So for portfolio building, we, I can ensure that the stocks I'm looking at and recommending fit the outcomes of the portfolio uh, we're putting together and the outcomes of the trading that we're looking for. Now, the other um, area I use it for is in terms of placement of stops. Okay. So let me just go back to V, and we'll do an example here. So if I was trading V or looking to enter V, okay, let's just get rid of all of the information on here. So I'm looking here saying, oh, V's just broken out. I'm going to try and trade this baby. And let's see what the close price is on V. It's around about 81 bucks, okay? Um, but the average true range is $3.30 nearly, okay? So I might, if I wasn't knowing that information, I might say here, you know, I just want to trade this stock V, and I uh, see it's broken out here, and I'm going to put a real tight stop on it because you know, I don't want it coming back down in this area. Maybe I'll put a stop at 79.50, just below this psychological 80 barrier. Okay, and the price is now about 81 and a bit. But 81 and a bit less 79 and a bit is two bucks. Okay, and that is well within its average volatility. So by placing a stop there, although it might look intelligent because it's just below that psychological 80 barrier. It's within its average volatility. It means it could just put down a lower candle during the day, take me out just in normal day-to-day -day volatility, and then continue on its merry way. And I get stopped out saying, oh, jeepers, why does that happen to me all the time? Well, if I'd use this information here, I would basically say, right, I need my stop to be at least $3.28 outside of the current price, and I'll put a little extension on it. Maybe I'll multiply it by 2 or 1.5 so that my stop comes down here out of the volatility, okay? So that's two areas where I get to where a using average true range um, comes in as a very very useful tool for me. Okay, so Tokyo and others watching this, hope uh, that answered the question and you found it of use. Uh, in the future, like I said, when we get the traders library up and running, you'll see more of these videos and hopefully uh, you'll get some um, very good value added information from them. Okay, guys, thanks for your time. Cheers.